Welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We thank you for joining us. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. The Federal Executive Council has approved over 60 billion naira for the construction, rehabilitation, and completion of critical road infrastructure in the Federal Capital Territory and other parts of the country for enhanced socio-economic development. Works and Housing Minister Babatunde Fashola and his FCT counterpart Mohammed Musa Bello announced this while briefing journalists after the council's meeting. We will bring you details of this in our subsequent bulletin. <laughs> President Mohammed Buhari has received reports of the brazen attack on Government Science College, Kagara, in Rafi, local government area of Niger State. Following this report, the President has directed the armed forces and police to ensure immediate and safe return of all the captives. The President has also dispatched to MENA, Niger State, a team of security chiefs to coordinate the rescue operation and meet with state officials, community leaders, as well as parents and staff of the college. President Buhari assures of the support of his administration to the armed forces in their brave struggle against terrorism and banditry and urge them to do all that can be done to bring an end to the menace. Meanwhile, Niger state government says it will implore all options except paying ransom to free all those in captivity, including the students and staff of Government Science College Kagara in Rafi local government area. Governor Abubakar Sani Bello, who stated this uh, in a press briefing, however, disclosed that a student of the college, science of the Science College Kagara, lost his life during the abduction. Mukhtari Abubakar Wawa reports. Abubakar Sani Bello, who acknowledged that it is a trying period for the state and the Nigeria solicit the support of the federal government in rescuing those in captivity. Another incident occurred today, Wednesday, the 17th, 2021, at about 2 a.m. at Government Science College, Kagara, where 27 students, three staff, and 12 members of their families were kidnapped. Unfortunately, one student was shot dead. I deeply concerned at these recent sad events and therefore called on the federal government to deploy all resources while we are looking at all options, both kinetic and non-kinetic, to ensure the safe return of victims of both instances. The governor ordered the closure of all boarding schools in Moya, Mariga, Rafi, and Shiroro local government areas of the state until further notice. We will not rest or sleep until we bring them back to their families. We are therefore appealing to all Nigerites to continue to pray for the safe return of our wives, fathers, daughters, sons. We need the understanding and cooperation of Nigerites at these trying moments to unanimously condemn all acts of criminality, banditry, and kidnapping with one voice. The federal government delegation, comprising of National Security Advisor Babagana Mungunu, the Inspector General of Police Muhammad Adamu, the Minister of Information Al Hajilai Muhammad, and that of the Interior Rauf Aregwesola, arrived in the State Government House, Mina, in response to the kidnapping of the students and others at the Government Science College, Kagara. 
from the government house in Mina, Mukhtar Abu Bakr, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Senate has urged President Muhammad Buhari to declare a state of emergency on security in Nigeria. This followed a motion of urgent public importance by Senator Sani Musa, which condemned the abduction of some students from government science school Kagara in Niger State. The motion condemned the reoccurring incidents of abducting school children and called for massive joint security operations to rescue the students, fish out their perpetrators, and destroy their hideouts. Meanwhile, the Senate has confirmed the nomination of Agugu Adolphus for appointment as the Auditor General for the Federation. This followed the consideration of the report of the Senate Committee on Public Accounts, where the legislative arm of government harped on the need to ensure the independence of the Office of the Auditor General for the Federation. Beyond the literal meaning translated for common understanding of human existence and the desire for social harmony and national cohesion is the acceptance to flourish together in peace and work towards achieving sustainable progress for the greater happiness of all. And as Nigeria aspires to attain these heights, social unrest on the other hand continues to deprive the people of genuine love for one another which sometimes takes a wrong trajectory. Guess on NTA Current Affairs program Tuesday Live say, the squabbles are surmountable only if peace and national integration are given a chance. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports. Government should encourage good, good conduct and be given awards and recognitions to people that are promoting national inclusiveness, national unity, national peace. I must make it very clear that there is nobody that believes in this country that would continue to indulge in acts that would culminate in parcelating Nigeria. These are voices of wisdom and facts that cannot be changed for peace to reign supreme. Nigeria has remained united despite all holes and the negative factors threatening the corporate existence of the Nigerian state is not far from being over. The Shasha killings may have taken an extreme dimension at a time government is striving hard to put an end to the space of insecurity in parts of the country. More than 25 people were killed in Shasha over a very needless crisis. We have multicultural society, multi-ethnic society, and of course, this should be an advantage to Nigeria. Once everyone to carry arms, to be licensed to carry arms, I don't think it is a solution. Without unity, there's no way there can be progress, you know, in any nation. Guests say the diversity of Nigeria should remain the source of its strength rather than division and tendency for violence extremism, which should not be an option for settling disagreement. We saw what happened in the United States quite recently. If it were some other places, the, 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 the entire country would have collapsed. But no matter what happened in the United States, we remember the January 6th uh, uh, Capitol attack and the rest of them, democracy still prevailed. When you take section 15, subsection 4, it says that loyalty for every citizen of the Federation, particularly those in authority, is to the nation. And any paramodial consideration, whether ethnic, whether tribal, whether religious, should we apologize for the freezing pictures on that report. Moving on now, federal government delegation comprising of National Security Advisor Babagana Monguno, Inspector General of Police Mohamed Adamu, Ministers of Information Al Haji Lai Mohamed, and that of Interior Raouf Aregbeshola, arrived at Niger State Government House, Mina, in response to the kidnapping of students and others at, Gov at science, Government Science College, Kagara. The leader of the delegation, Al Haji Lai Mohammed, said, Federal government says it will not surrender the sovereignty of Nigeria to some faceless hoodlums. <laughs> In particular, and in Nigeria in general, that the administration would leave no stone unturned to ensure the safety of life, 
majority of life, take your property, will continue to wait to you. We are here also to take the first hundred of his Excellency, which has given us, and to further re-strategize the need of security in our state. We are very glad at what we have witnessed when we came, and we found that the governor, with his family, is actively exploring both kinetic and non kinetic approaches to ensure the safe release of all the people. Minister also assured Nigerians that the federal government is on top of the situation as it is employing all strategies to address the security challenges bedeviling the country. At a time the country is throwing everything into ensuring that there is lasting peace, the Emir of Lafia, Justice Mohammed Sidi Bagi I, is keying into these efforts towards ensuring peaceful coexistence in his domain as he takes messages of peace to his communities under his Emirate Council. Abigail Bashi reports. The Emir's visit is to complement his efforts by taking messages of peace in the villages on the need for peaceful coexistence. We appreciate your visit. Located 13 kilometers away from the state capital, Burkin Abdullahi, an agrarian settlement with high potentials for economic prosperity. The monarch reiterates that his visit is to underscore the need for traditional rulers to take responsibilities of the well-being of their subjects. This interaction affords us the opportunity to know how our people are doing, to know their immediate problems, those of which we can attend, we attend to them. Those of which we cannot, but pass on the message to the government. In Lafia, Abigail Bashi, NTA News. You are watching Nationwide. Lagos is our first port of call, and Hingino will be guiding us. Hello, Hingino. Hello, Lydia. Illegal activities along the Lagos waterfront have persisted, posing environmental, security and maritime challenges to safe navigation for water transportation. To change this narrative, an enforcement team of the federal government has begun demolition of illegal structures along the Lagos coast lines. Dr. Nogwiemi reports. These are illegal shanties constructed along the Lagos coastline of Lekki. Although they have been illegally occupied for years, the clearance and demolition became necessary following the expiration of an eviction notice over concerns of security threats and navigational challenges posed to maritime activities. We discovered that uh, most of all these area boys, these bad boys, if they commit their atrocities on the highway here, they, come, they use this place as their hard house. And at, at the same time, blocking the navigable channels in Lagos State. So we feel that it can no longer be tolerated. After this, the Lagos area office will take possession of it because it's for us within our right of way. We will now decide what government can do with it. The National Inland Waterways Enforcement Team also raided some areas in Ikoi and Banana Island where illegal land reclamation has persisted despite warnings. The enforcement, according to Niwa, continues as the agency has served eviction notices to illegal occupants of areas along the vast Lagos coastline. In Lagos, Dotson Ogunyemi, NTA News. 25 additional veterinary doctors are to be employed by the Lagos State Government to boost the capacity of medical personnel in the Ministry of Agriculture with a view to enhancing healthy meat production across the state. Governor Babajide Sonwolu gave the directive while inaugurating an ultra-modern mechanized abattoir in Bariga, Lagos. Musa Toliat has details. 
The commissioning of the mechanized abattoir in Bariga brings the number of abattoirs in the state to 16, out of which 11 is run by the state government. Governor Babajide Sonwolu says the project is born out of the need to sustain government's relentless efforts to process wholesome meat under healthy and hygienic conditions. If we're consuming over 1.8 cattle, we're consuming over 1.6 sheep and goats, it means that we can indeed, you know, create a big ecosystem, a big, controlled, managed, clean industry in our red meat value chain. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, who witnessed the project commissioning, lauded the initiative by the state government to provide an enabling environment for establishment of the mechanized abattoir. These are really what drives societies all over the world. Small, medium, family businesses. But why is this important? If every member of the APC who is a lawyer, small business, doctor, small business, accountant, small business, bricklayer, small business, begins to employ one, one person, will we have unemployment again as a problem in Nigeria? That is why this is important. The mechanized abattoir was approved for development in 2014 in Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. We now take a break. Nationwide continues shortly. Thanks for staying with us. Senate Committee on Finance has called on the federal government to constitute the board of the Fiscal Responsibility Commission in order to make it carry out its full responsibilities. Chairman Senate Committee on Finance, Adeola Olamilekon, made the appeal when the presidential nominee for the commission, Victor Muraiko, appeared before the committee for screening. National Assembly correspondent Mobolaji Moribirin has the report. Victor Muruako is the acting chairman of the Fiscal Responsibility Commission. During the screening exercise, the lawmakers I'm pointed out issues the confronting the commission and I'm how the presidential nominee the can resolve them as his responsibility includes monitoring public resources. The result of trying to make the agency redundant and not making it to be fully functional, their responsibility has been reduced to the lowest end. And I strongly believe that if we have a full board in place, I believe that all revenue generating agencies of the federal government will be taken aback and we can reposition this country in terms of what comes into the country in terms of revenue. The nominee is optimistic that he would work in accordance with the provisions required by the commission. I will ensure that the commission is repositioned. In what way? You will check, sir, that over time that we've been able to improve on the remittances of the agencies. His confirmation would follow the recommendation by the committee Sometimes at plenary. From the National Assembly, Mobolaji, Moribiri, NCA News. Meanwhile, the Joint National Assembly Committee on Health has maintained its position to hold on to the utilization of 10 billion naira budget, budgeted for the production of local vaccines until all legal framework are provided. This was the position of the committee at an interactive session with the Minister of Health. Dayo Ogunshola reports. Quest for production of vaccines to address the challenges posed by coronavirus pandemic has put all nations across the world in the race to look inward for homegrown solutions, especially the production of vaccines. Already, Nigeria has joined the race with budgetary provision of 10 billion naira to commence local production of the vaccines. At a meeting of the Joint National Assembly Committee on Health, Minister of Health provided insight into the Memorandum of Understanding of Government with Bao Vaccines Nigeria Limited for local vaccine production. The purpose of the EBU, that we now give a part of that thing now, now that it's running. But now, in the meantime, if you look, if you look at our vaccine profile, our vaccination profile is reaching very high. A part of that, of that activity it can 
now be handed over to. So there is nothing that has been spoiled at all to buy vaccines, so they have their time to develop, and then that market is there waiting for them. However, the committee demanded that the status of the 10 billion naira allocated vaccine production should be more strategic and measurable before it can be assessed. Just the take home is that the suspension st stands. They, uh, we will have another poor day. We will fix another date with the vaccines that we invite you, especially to listen to you. Well, what we want, Honorable Minister, this 10 billion of public funds, we want to know specifically what it will deliver to us. The greatest news I've had today is that you will talk to us personally. Yes. I mean, then you will understand my passion. On the availability of COVID-19 vaccines, the Minister of Health provided the committee with a detailed deployment plan as they projected that by the end of February, the vaccines will be available in the country. In Abuja, Dayo Gunshola, NTA News. Now, now Sarawa state government is targeting more than 1 million persons as it flags off statewide free medical services to meet their health needs. Ali Tijani Mohammed reports that Governor Abdullahi Sule also launched the state basic health care scheme for civil servants in the state. Both young and old, they all converge on a way to benefit from the free medical service of the state government. That is beneficial to us. We really thank God and we really thank the government. I day office that I had this program that immediately I said, let me come with my just small boy. Uh, we have been suffering from uh, going up and down looking for our health. And if this, uh, this really has they come to help us, it will help us a lot. 700 patients with illnesses such as hepatitis, diabetes, among others, will be attended to, with 15 surgeries expected to be carried out during the flag off. Dalhatu Arab Specialist Hospital Lafia, with its team of medical professionals, is providing the services with the support of the State Ministry of Health. We shall endeavor to provide more healthcare services to guarantee the well-being of our people in Nasarawa State. Similarly, the state government flagged off the implementation of basic health care scheme to provide access to quality and affordable health care to civil servants in the state. The scheme, Governor Sule said, is to subsidize health care services to workers in the state. National Health Insurance Scheme, NHIS, and the World Health Organization, WHO, are providing technical support to the scheme. Aliu Tijani Mohamed, NTA News. It is now time to join Dibabari in our Port Harcourt Network Center for more reports on Nationwide. Hello Dibabari, it's over to you. Adrian, welcome to Port Harcourt. For many Orthodox churches, the beginning of Lent is traditionally marked by the distribution of ashes on the foreheads of Christians, referred to as Ash Wednesday. This is just as believers are expected to make commitments to fasting, prayers, and charity. Ijama Ogweke visited some churches in Port Harcourt City and captured the mood and messages of Ash Wednesday. <laughs> and believe in the gospel, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Our words repeated during the marking of a cross on the foreheads of believers, reminding them of their mortal existence. Every human being to go back to God and think of the season, and then our relationship with God and one another. As part of Ash Wednesday tradition, many Christians abstain from food during the 40 penitential days of preparation leading to Easter. To many believers, lengthy promises or resolutions are made to mark this important holy season. While to some, the message of Ash Wednesday is that of sober reflection. It is a time that we we look at that very concept, return back to Him, and see and reconcile ourselves with Him, with our Maker. This period, to be precise, I will make sure. I treat others the way I want to be treated. If you eat meat, you like eating meat, that thing you like doing, you know, if you like eating meat or ice cream, you can say, no, I don't want to take ice cream for this period. It's just a way of taming your body. Ash Wednesday is always marked six and a half weeks before Easter, and it's a call for charity and attending to spiritual practices. In Port Harcourt, Ijo Mugweke, NTA News. 
To stay safe from the COVID-19 pandemic, Nigerians must abide by the guidelines and protocols. And so, the Special Marshal of Kwai State engaged commuters and motorists on an enlightenment campaign to sensitize on safe guidelines. Wisdom Jacob reports. President Muhammadu Buhari, in his effort to contain the spread of the rising number of COVID-19, recently signed the COVID-19 Disease Health Protection 2021, a regulation which makes the use of face masks mandatory in public places. It is against this background that the Special Marshal, one of the three arms of the Federal Road Safety Commission in collaboration with the regular Marshal, Akwaibom State Command, embarked on an enlightenment campaign to distance Johnny Motor Parks to remind commuters and drivers on the need to observe COVID-19 safety protocols at all times. It has become a law in this country that if you fail to obey COVID-19 protocols, you can be prosecuted. We have to make sure we sensitize the people of Akwaibom State to try as much as they can to make use of their face mask and to also make use of whatever they can when they are in the vehicles, not to be men in the cars. They are coming and also bring to bear the necessary things we need to do, coupled with this COVID-19 uh, issues, the challenges that we are having. The enlightenment campaign also afforded the opportunity of testing drivers to identify those that have taken alcohol and had drugs. In Uyo, Wisdom Jacob, NTA News. We are down here. It's back to Lydia for the rest of the news. Good evening. Many thanks, Lima Bari. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu says the Commission plans additional polling units before the next general elections to avoid congestion during voting while availing voters the opportunity for observing COVID-19 protocols. Hassan Lawa reports that the chairman stated this at a meeting with members of the Arewa Consultative Forum in Kaduna. Former Governor Benga, okay, in Kaduna. According to the INEC chairman, since 1996, the number of polling units were more than 120,000 to serve 50 million voters. And in 1999, the number of eligible voters exceeded 84 million with the same polling units. We contacted all groups nationwide and some have started giving us debts. One of the associations or groups that has given us a debt is the Area Consultative Forum. So we just see the opportunity of the meeting of the organs to come and brief them. But going forward we will also interact with all other sociocultural associations as they give us debts nationwide. Uh, we also understand uh, the explanations. Uh, so considering what they have, the fact that uh, since 1996 the polling units have not been increased, uh, we think that it's necessary uh, for the convenience of democracy. Professor Yakubu says the organization will continue with the interaction across all stakeholders. In Kaduna, I am Hassan Lawan Shatima, NTA News. Ebony State Governor David Umahi has called on purveyors of fake news to desist from such acts which is capable of causing disunity in the country. Umai, who was speaking after the revalidated, after revalidating his membership with the All Progressives Congress Party at his local government in, in the state, said patriotism should be the watchword for every Nigerian. Chika Okurie reports. Governor Omae, while revalidating his membership, expressed optimism that about 1.2 million people are expected to either register or revalidate their membership of the party in 2,000 polling units in the state. We are the next level. Southeast has since moved on. Southeast is APC. Just two days ago, Mr. President approved 400 million for us to do empirical evaluation of our salt deposits so that we can build hypochlorite solution for the entire water treatment in Nigeria and also for table salt and also commercial uses. Governor Omahe further thanked President Mohamed Buhari for, among other things, approving 6 billion naira for the state to invest in limestone granite, a major material for fertilizer production. In Abakaliki, Chika Okori, NTA News. Work will soon commence at the site for the proposed 
10,000 housing units initiated by the federal government. Executive Director of Business Development in the Federal Housing Authority, Abdul Mumin Jibril Kofa, disclosed this while inspecting the 500 hectares of land on which the project is to be executed. Abdullahi Mustafa has the details. Vast land situated around Dawano in the outskirts of Kano is the site of the federal government's proposed mass housing estate. It was allocated by Kano State Government to facilitate its timely takeoff. The project is part of strategies for the actualization of federal government's plan of addressing housing deficit in the country. In preparation for its commencement, Executive Director Business Development of the Federal Housing Authority, Abdul Mumin Jibrun Kofa, led an inspection team to the site. He disclosed that the project will be executed in phases. So we're trying to see how fast we can finish the pre-project process then, then before we can now deploy on site and commence work. The Executive Director was earlier at the Federal Housing Estate Sharada where he met with residents on planned regeneration of the facility. In Kanu, Abdullahi Mustafa, NTN News. The Berno State Government has set up a task force to address the endemic incidences of human trafficking in the state. Deputy Governor of Berno State, Benson Abono, inaugurated the team under the watch of the Director General of NAPTIP, Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, at the Government House Makudi. Charles Abba was there. Workers from the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, indicate that the agency has investigated 375 cases, rescued 53 victims, and convicted 75 suspects involved in human trafficking since 2013. It is to further tame the tide of the menace that the Deputy Governor, Benson Abonu, inaugurated a task force chaired by the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Michael Gusa. The enactment of the VAPP law has presented us with more opportunities to collaborate with National Agency for the Prohibition of, of Human Trafficking in Persons to reduce, if not to eliminate, incidences of rape and other forms of human degradation. A new initiatives must be developed for ensuring adequate resources for the rehabilitation of returnees and victims of human trafficking and irregular migration in order to mitigate the phenomenon of trafficking. She noted that human trafficking has assumed an alarming proportion and constituted a great national security concern in recent times. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. Still on the Lenten season, as activities for this year's Easter celebration in the Christendom begins with Lent, Nigerians have been admonished to repent from sin and love one another. This was part of the message to mark 2021 Ash Wednesday in Uyo, Akwaibom State. Kelvin Samuel reports. To mark the beginning of Lent is the Ash Wednesday, which physically has to do with blessings of ash born from palm branches or cross made from palm leaves used during previous year's Palm Sunday celebration. However, this ritual means more to Christians than a simple burning of ashes. This is reminding us this season to get closer to God and that our body is the temple of the Lord. We need to sacrifice this season, love one another. It reminds us that we came from the dust and thus shall we return. That is the beginning of Easter as a Catholic. This is the beginning of 40 days. A clergy, Reverend Father Donatus Odoite, gives more insight to the significance of Ash Wednesday and how best to celebrate it. So it is the beginning of a journey. And this journey is a journey of repentance, reconciliation, and return to God. So it is time for us to stop for a moment, take stock of our lives, and begin to see where we went wrong in order to move forward. As a matter of fact, if this country returns to God, then it will be one of the best of countries we may have mean we will be having in the world. In previous years, the ash was usually placed on the forehead, but the church, as part of measures to curtail the further spread of COVID-19, adopted the concept of placing it at the center of the head for this season. In Uyo, Kelvin Samuel, NTA News. Nationwide continues in just network center and Frama is our guide. 
okay, I'm told they are not ready yet, so let's go to our next report. It is a known fact that providing for the needs of the elderly, particularly in Africa, requires paying special attention to their health, comfort, and material well-being. An organization, the Dave Omokaro Foundation, is partnering with other partners to develop a policy framework for the enhancement of the livelihoods of those classified as senior citizens. Olabodi Arewa reports. Elder Shola Mahoney is one Nigerian who is not a stranger to the challenges common to senior citizens who are 60 years of age and above. Though he is relishing his life as a retired person, he nevertheless knows firsthand what it is to be an older person in a developing country like Nigeria. And the older persons are often seen as taking resources, opportunities, jobs away from the youth. So already we have a problem because there is this uh, sort of oppositionality that's been set up, a false one if you ask me, between the old and the youth. Just like him, participants at this virtual forum are brainstorming on practical ways to help elderly people cope with the phenomenon. The shifting of the paradigm, the changing, the con changing of conversation from older persons is a burden to older persons is investment. How do we turn it around? Inclusive growth and sustainable development. That is a very, very critical uh, pillar because that is where you will find the issues of aging and older persons. The firm observed that because majority of elderly people in Africa are residents in rural areas, helping them gain access to economic opportunities should be at the core of any assistance, either from government or the private sector. The firm expects to fashion out a framework that will guide the implementation of future social protection programs for old people in Nigeria. Olabodewa, NT News. Joss is up and ready to go. And Frama is standing by. Frama. Hello, Lydia. Welcome to Joss. Key players in peace building have expressed displeasure over rampant cases of incidences of killings in some villages in Basa local government area of Plateau State. This is as they converge in Joss to find enduring solutions to the killings. Indian and Diabagyang reports. The Peace Party is coming on the heels of recent killings in some parts of the state, especially in Basa local government area. Participants expressed concern over the killings and condemned it in strong terms. The leadership of the Fulani men that live within these local governments, the leadership of the traditional um, stool of these various places. We are met, and we all agreed on something. And that thing we have agreed upon has been broken. What an unfortunate act. I want to assure that myself and of my operatives on the platform will not relent in our pursuit of this wicked and cowardly criminal. Other notable speakers express the need for all to team up and find workable solutions to stop the killings. Leaders from Basa local government and our own security agencies, let's rise up, team up together, let's stop the killing. Give us the hate way for us to bring back peace in Plateau State. They were also quick to point out that the recent inauguration of Interreligious Committee is born out of the need to embrace dialogue and pursuit of peaceful coexistence in the state, in Jos, in Denyan, and the Abagyan, NTA News. Plateau State Police Command has paraded more than 30 suspects in connection with various crimes. Bill Kisunuhu has details. The suspects were arrested for crimes ranging from theft, kidnapping, conspiracy, culpable homicide, possession of arms and stolen items. Commissioner of Police Edward Ebuka disclosed that from the month of October 2020 to date, the command has recorded some breakthrough in the fight against crime in the state. He called on the public to be vigilant and watch out for criminal elements that are bent on causing havoc in the community. Uh, the criminal elements clearly are warned that in their own interest to either retrace their steps and desist from their nefarious activities or relocate out of this state 
Otherwise, of course, the dragnet of the command will definitely catch them. CP Ebuka appreciated Governor Lalong and officers and men of the command for being proactive in dealing with criminal elements, especially with the introduction of the anti-kidnapping, land grabbing, and cultism law. The suspects will be charged once investigations are concluded. In Joss, Bilki Sunuhu, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Joss. It's back to you, Lydia in Abuja, for the rest of Nationwide. Many thanks, Frama. Poverty, ignorance, and leadership failure on the part of the political elites have been enumerated as sub reasons for the current ethnic tension in Nigeria. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria who made the submission while suggesting ways to douse the current state of affairs, Ekene Ndulwe reports. 60 years after Nigeria's independence, the country is still battling with primordial issues of ethnic violence and discrimination. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria, who acknowledged that no country can progress without peace, also emphasized that every Nigerian has a right to live and work in any part of the country without hindrance. Poverty and uh, the economic challenges that people are facing uh, would be considered as one of the major triggers for these, these ethnic tensions. This tension when it comes up is often amongst the downtrodden. You know, those who are near nihilists, who, does, who do, probably does not have, you know, who, who are not able to appreciate life. We see it happening, but again, we see them wanting to strike at the elites. Who because we have completely, for three decades or more, as a nation, failed to invest in human security, we are now reaping the benefit of this neglect. The guests advocated observance of the constitutional principles of equality, freedom, social justice, and rule of law as solution to the problem of rising ethnic tensions in the country. We need to have government at all levels having the ability to harness our resources, our commonwealth, manage our diversity in the best interest of Nigeria. People should remember that we are so interwoven <coughs> and um, uh, so interrelated that an action in one part will trigger a reaction in another part. They also believe that with the right policies and increased sensitization, the narrative will change for the better. In Abuja, Ekene Ndulwe, NTA News. We're now joining uh, correspondent Abdullahi Mohammed, who is live in Kagara. Uh, uh, Abdullahi, hello. Thanks for joining us on Nationwide. You are at the scene of what, where, what is trending all over the, the, the social media and also on the media. What is the situation on ground? All right, uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, we just arrived at uh, Kagara just a few uh, moments ago. If you can see behind me here, you see a lot of security uh, have guarded here. In much later, we seem to be having a challenge there. We'll take a break now. We'll continue when we come back. Welcome back. 26.8 million poor and vulnerable individuals across the country have been registered in the National Social Register, a database for social intervention programs. This was stated by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, during an inter-ministerial dialogue on the National Social Register in the fight against poverty in the country. Ruth Aguele reports. Poverty, a global norm. The fight against poverty in the country has continued to raise concerns with different strategies put in place by the federal government to eliminate this pandemic. This interministerial dialogue organized by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development is to promote an all-inclusive approach for poverty reduction interventions through an effective use of the National Social Register, a database that allows extensive coverage of social protection on targeted beneficiaries drawn from registration of the poor and vulnerable households across the country as a gateway to coordinate social intervention programs of the federal government. 
we have identified and registered 26.8 million poor and vulnerable individuals, equivalent to 6.3 million households in our country. We are expecting another 20 million to be added to the database and held in the rapid response register. You will all agree with me that women are the face of poverty. If we ignore this huge pop population, which is over 50% of the total population of the country, then we've missed it. It's a people-centered initiative. This is where the transparency, the integrity, the accountability and inclusiveness of the social register lies. It is expected that with access to the national social register, partners will take advantage of the initiative to flatten the poverty curve in the country. In Abuja, Ruth Aguale, NT News. A three-day Fidel prayer was offered in Eula in honor of late Hajia Mariam Ahmadu Goguso, her stepmother to the First Lady Aisha Muhammad Buhari. Nafisa Abdul Hamid Dembos reports. Hundreds of sympathizers trooped into Yola to commiserate with the family of the First Lady on the death of Mariam Ahmadu Gogosong, who died recently at the age of 89. The deceased was described as humble and God-fearing, whose contributions to the family and her immediate community will be greatly missed. Everybody is her child. Let's learn a lesson from her. A great leader to us is a pillar in our family. We lost her, we miss her. Very big uh, debtors. This is a national loss for every child because of her caring. She constantly prayed for me and uh, supported me. A three-day Fidel prayer was offered for Allah to grant her into genital Fidel's and to comfort the family she left behind. Hajia Mariam Amadou died last Saturday in Abuja after a brief illness. She is survived by three children, including Musa Halilu Ama Chiroma, Dujima Adamawa, and was a stepmother to the First Lady, Aisha Muhammad Buhari. In Yola, Nafisa to Abdul Hamid Dembos, NT News. We now rejoin Abdullahi in Kaga Kagara in Niger State. Uh, Abdullahi, if you can hear me now, what is the situation there? We apologize for the lack of audio. They will surely rejoin Abdullahi in our subsequent bulletins. Let's now take the NCDC update. 1,368 new COVID-19 infections have been recorded in Nigeria in the last 24 hours, bringing the country's total confirmed cases to 148,286. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control NCDC says the new infections were found in 27 states and the FCT. Anambra recorded the highest with 344 cases, Oyo 172, FCT 148, Benue 107, Rivers 95, Ogun 59, Ondo 56, Ebony 53, Kaduna 52, Plateau 46, Kwara 36, while Enugu has 30 cases of the virus. Akwabom recorded 26 new COVID-19 cases, Oshun 22, Edo 20, Abia 17, Kano 16, Bruno 15, Delta and Gumbi recorded 8 cases each, Imo 7, Ekiti 5, Sokoto 4, Wajigawa, Bayelsa, Nasarawa and Zamfara recorded 3 cases of the virus. So far, 124,483 cases have been discharged, while the death toll is now 1,777. Sports is next.
Super Falcons will on Thursday morning begin the chase for Turkish Invitational Women's Cup against CSK Moscow in Atalia, Turkey. The Nigeria senior women's team, which arrived Turkey on Monday alongside its technical crew, have intensified preparations after undergoing a compulsory COVID-19 test on Tuesday. The match is the first since assumption of coach Randy Waldrum. Still on football, as the Nigeria Professional Football League prepares for match day 11 across the country, the Nigeria Football Federation has reassured on its commitment towards ensuring that all laid down guidelines for COVID-19 regulations are strictly adhered to by all the clubs. NFF Tax Force Committee on COVID-19 promised not to leave any stone unturned in saving the lives of players and officials. We have started going around and to ensure that the protocol are being observed and then we are having uh, total support from the teams as well as the state FAs and the leagues itself. To tennis now in the Australian Open, former world number one Rafael Nadal failed to reach the 2021 semi-finals as the Spaniard lost 6-3, 6-2, 6-7, 4-6, 5-7 to Stefano Tsitsipa. We will now meet Damil Medvedev on Friday and that sports updates. I am Tamara Ebiwe. Nationwide. Thank you for being a part of it. I am Lydia Ojijoji. Have a pleasant evening. Goodbye.